In this video, we're going to determine the focal length of a concave mirror. Now, before we can make a precise measurement of the focal length, first we need to make an approximation. This will help us set up our experiment later. To do that, we need to capture an image of an object that's very far away or at an infinite distance. To make an approximate measurement of the focal length, we can use the lens formula 1 over f equals 1 over u plus 1 over v. Now, what happens to this formula if our object distance u is very large or infinitely far away? 1 over u will go to 0, and our lens formula becomes 1 over f equals 1 over v. So v is equal to f. The focal length is the image distance under these conditions. Basically, if we can capture an image of an object that is far away from our mirror, the distance from the screen to the mirror is equal to the focal length. I've taken our concave mirror over to the window of our lab to capture an image of an object as far away as possible. As you can see, the houses and trees across the road from ATU are beginning to come into focus. Our image is also inverted. You can use a ruler to measure the distance from the back of the mirror to the screen. This is equal to the focal length. The focal length of this mirror is approximately 5 centimetres. So why do we need an approximation of the focal length? Well, if you look at the ray diagram, if we set our object distance to be less than the focal length of the mirror, we'll actually end up with a virtual image and we won't be able to carry out the experiment. Whereas if we set the object distance greater than the focal length, we will have a real image that we can capture on a screen and that image will be inverted. To accurately determine the focal length of our mirror, our apparatus consists of an optical table, our light box, our target, our object, our concave mirror, and a viewing screen to capture the image. From our approximate measurements, we know that the focal length of the mirror is about five centimeters. So I've set the object distance, the distance from the target to the mirror, to be 15 centimeters. Now you can set this value with a meter stick Luckily on our optical table we have a scale, so the position of our target is 20 centimetres and the back of the mirror is located at 35 centimetres, so the difference between 35 and 20 is 15 centimetres. We can now add our viewing screen and try to get a sharp image of our target. As our setup is in a straight line, if I put the viewing screen in, it will actually block the light from the target from ever reaching the mirror. So we make a small adjustment by using about half of the viewing screen. This allows light from the target to get through to the mirror and also allows an image to be formed on the screen. With our viewing screen in place, we can now carefully adjust its position until we get a sharp image of the target onto the screen. Our target actually has arrows to represent directions, one pointing away from the camera and one pointing straight up. And on our image, we can see that our arrow is pointing towards the camera and down. So our image is inverted. It's also smaller than our original target size. So our image from this concave mirror is inverted and diminished. We can now measure our object distance. That's the distance from the back of the mirror to the front of our screen. Again, luckily, we have a scale on our optical table, so we can just record the positions of the mirror and the screen and calculate the object distance. You could also use a meter stick to measure from the back of the mirror to the front of the screen. Remember to take your measurements perpendicular to the scale to avoid the error of parallax. Now that we've taken our measurements for one object distance, we can adjust the position of the mirror. I'll now adjust it to be 20 centimeters. And we can repeat the process of adjusting the viewing screen position to get a sharp image of our object. Once we get a sharp image on the screen, we can determine the image distance for this new object distance and solve for another value of f. The experiment can be repeated for more values of u and v. So here is my experimental data. 
Now we have two options to determine the focal length of the mirror. The first option is that we use the lens formula to calculate five separate values for the focal length, and then we can get an average. The second option would be to plot one over V versus one over U. The intercept of the line of best fit is equal to one over F, and then we can solve for the focal length. To calculate the focal length, I've used the lens formula to calculate five different values for F from each of our five measurements. The average value of the focal length was found to be 5.1 centimeters. So how can we use a graph to determine the focal length? We start with the lens formula and rearrange it in terms of one over V. We get one over V equals minus one over U plus one over F. That's the same as one over V equals minus one times one over U plus one over F. We have an equation of a straight line. If we plot our data for one over V against one over U and apply a line of best fit, the slope of the line should be minus one and the intercept is equal to one over F. We can then solve for F. To plot our graph, we need to take our experimental data and calculate the corresponding one over U and one over V values. We can then plot one over V on the Y axis and one over U on the X axis. A line of best fit can then be included. From the equation of this line, we can see that the slope is minus 0 0.986. This is close to the value of minus one, which we discussed previously. The intercept of the line is 0 0.1968. Now remember that the intercept C in this plot is equal to one over F. So solving for the focal length, we get a value of 5.1 centimeters. And that's how we determine the focal length of a concave mirror. For more videos of experiments and information about our course, please check out the Physics and Instrumentation playlist on YouTube.